Hello everyone, we are back and now we are solving equations with fractions. Example 2a. So we're going to go 2a, 2b, 2c and then you guys will have a chance in the check it out to do 2a, 2b, and 2c. All right, so let's get started. Um, we are solving equations, so we know that there's an equal sign, and we are trying to figure out what n equals. So to figure out what n equals, we have to isolate it. We have to get it by itself. Um, so it is the only thing on the side of the equation. Right now, um, n is not by itself. There is a 2 7th over here. So... Uh, we need to get rid of it. So how we get rid of it is through inverse operations. Remember, inverse operations are operations. Oh, we can't see that. Let's slide this over a little bit. Inverse operations are operations which are inverses of each other. So um, the inverse operation of addition would be subtraction. And the inverse operation of subtraction is addition. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. And the inverse operation of division is multiplication. All right, cool. We're back over here. Trying to get in by itself. So, um, how is 2 7th related to n? Well, it's related through addition. So, we need to do the inverse operation, which would be, yes, subtraction. So, we're going to subtract by 2 7th. And this is how you show your work, just like I'm doing here. And we have to do it to both sides of the equation, right? Cool. 2 7th minus 2 7th is 0. So, those cancel out. We're just left with n. Awesome. We have now isolated in. N is by itself. Now we just need to do this little bit. This is a negative. It kind of looks weird, but this is a negative 3 7 okay? So negative uh, 3 7 minus 2 7. Well, this is a negative number, and this is a negative number. So whenever you have um, two numbers that are negative, you just go ahead and add the numbers and then keep the sign. So, which is totally awesome is that they have a common denominator. So, all we need to do is keep that 7 and then add these. What's 3 plus 2? 3 plus 2 is 5. And since they're both um, negative, we're just going to keep the negative. And so, the answer is n equals negative 5 over 7. Cool. Are we done? No, we're not done. We need to check this. So, remember, whenever we check a problem, we have to write the original equation. So we're going to rewrite that. n plus 2 sevenths equals negative 3 sevenths. And we are going to be evaluating this when n equals negative 5 over 7. So we're going to substitute this in for n. So instead of writing n, I'm writing negative 5 sevenths here plus 2 over 7 equals negative 3 sevenths. Does equal? I don't know. We have to figure out if it does. Okay, so this is awesome. They both have a common denominator and we're adding. So we can go ahead and keep that denominator of seven. Okay, what I notice here, this is negative, the, the five is negative, the two is positive. The signs are different. When the signs are different, you take the difference. So we're gonna take the difference between five and two. What's the difference between five and two? It is three. Okay. So the difference is 3. Then we look at the two numbers, 5 and 2. Which number is bigger? 5. Well, what is the sign of 5? Five? 5 is negative, so that means our answer is going to be negative. So um, negative 5 over 7 plus 2 over 7 equals negative 3 over 7, which is the same thing as over here, negative 3 sevenths. So this is a true statement. It is true. And what does that mean? Well, that means that the original solution that we have is a solution to the original equation. So let's write it. N equals, oh, let me move it up. Negative five over seven is the solution to the, oh wait, solution to the equation. N plus two sevenths equals negative three sevenths. All right, there we go. Okay, on to the next one, 2b. All right, here we go. y minus 1 6 equals 2 thirds. Okay, same thing. We got to isolate y. We got to get y by itself. Is y by itself? No. Okay, what's around y? This negative 1 6 business. How do we get rid of it? Well, we have to do the inverse operation of a negative, which is a positive. So we're going to add 1 6 to both sides. Just like this, this is exactly how you'd show your work. Um, negative 1, 6 and a positive 1, 6 are going to cancel each other out. 
So we did it. Y is now by itself. And now we have this business of two thirds plus one six. Okay, I'm gonna go over here to my little side paper and do this bit. Two thirds, um, just to keep things neat. You don't wanna do it right here, it just muddles it up. You wanna keep your equation kind of going down really, really neat. And so do these little calculations on the side. Um, okay, so what would the common denominator be between three and six? Well, if you count by threes, three, six, oh, okay, that's six. Well, there, that's a six. Okay, that's gonna be our common denominator. It was gonna be six. This is already a six, cool. We're gonna leave it just like that. Three times what is six? Well, three times two is six, and you gotta do it to the bottom and the top. So we end up with two times two, which is four over two times three, which is six plus one over six which happens to be um, what we keep the six on the bottom and then just add the top four plus one is five cool five six um, we're gonna write that right there that's what two-thirds plus um, one six equals is five six all right um, that's our answer are we done no we're not done we need to check our answer and whenever we check our answer what do we do you are correct we are going to write the original equation right there awesome and we are going to figure out y equals five six we're going to solve it for when i guess i could put for when y equals five over six okay let's substitute that in uh five six that's going to go in for y i'm just dropping everything else minus uh one sixth equals two thirds all right this is really, really super awesome. They have a common denominator already, so I can just keep that six, which makes life way easier. Um, and then since I'm subtracting, there's already a common denominator. I'm just gonna do the little subtraction on top. Five minus one, which is four. Four equals two thirds. Well, those don't equal. Right, I'm trying to figure out if they equal or not, and those aren't the same thing. But let's look at four six. Is four six in simplest form? Is there a number that goes into four which also goes into six? Uh, yeah, uh, they're both even, so that means that two goes into both of those. So two goes into four how many times? Uh, two times. And two goes into six how many times? Three times. And look at that, we have our little two thirds right there so yes two-thirds does equal two-thirds we did it right so what does that mean that means the number y equals five six that we originally inserted into the equation for y since this is a true statement is the solution to this equation it's the answer all right so let's write it down y ooh, equals um y equals five six is the solution to the equation y minus one six equals two thirds and there we go that is the answer we did it okay on to the next Ooh, this one looks fun uh 2c all right so we have five six x equals five eighths all right is x by itself we're always trying to whenever we have an equation we're trying to get x by itself is x by itself no okay what's around x five six it says five six x well when a number is really really super close it's touching x what that means is it's multiplied so we have um five six times x so usually we do the inverse operation right which is uh, the inverse operation of multiplication is a uh, division but in this one instance whenever we have a fraction whenever we have a fraction um, multiplied multiplied by the variable um, whenever we have this little scenario like this what we're going to do is we're actually instead of dividing by the same number we are going to multiply by the reciprocal, reciprocal, recip, reciprocal. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. So what's the reciprocal of five divided by six? Well, that's the same thing as times the reciprocal six over five. 
and we're going to do it to one side and do it to the other six fifths. Now, when we do that, what happens? We have two fractions. We have six over five times five over six. Well, whenever we're multiplying fractions, what do we do? We look to cross cancel first and then multiply across. Okay, so let's look. Let's see what happens when we look to cross cancel. Is there any common factors between six and six? Well, yeah, six. Six goes into six one time, six goes into six one time. Let's look here. Are there any common factors between five and five? Oh yeah, five. Five goes into five one time, five goes into five the other time. So when we multiply that um, by the reciprocal, what happens is all this ends up being one and one times x is x. So we just isolated x and got x by itself. So whenever you see that little fraction right there, um, instead of dividing, even though it is times x, we're just going to multiply by the reciprocal. All right, so let's go over here to this side. Um, we are multiplying fractions. We are going to look to cross cancel. This is super nice. There's a 5 and a 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 5 one time. Um, now we have 6 and 8. What goes into 6 and 8? Yes, 2 goes into 6 and 8. 2 goes into 6 three times. 2 goes into 8 four times. So we are left when we multiply across. 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 1 is 4. And there we go. Are we done? No, we're not done because we have to check our answer by hand. So we're going to rewrite the original equation. 5, 6, x equals 5, 8. Uh, let me make a better equal sign. For when, uh, for when x equals 3 fourths. All right, let's go ahead and substitute it in. So I'm rewriting this 5, 6. Instead of writing x, I'm writing 3 fourths equals 5 eighths. Okay, here we go. Uh, we are multiplying fractions. So whenever we multiply fractions, first we look to cross cancel. Are there any common factors between 5 and 4? I'm going to say no. What about 3 and 6? Any common factors between 3 and 6? Yes, 3. 3 goes into 3 one time. 3 goes into 6 two times. All right, now we're just going to go ahead and multiply across. 5 times 1 is 5. 2 times 4 is 8. And there we go. We have 5 equaling 8 which is a true statement, which means x equals 3 fourths is the solution to the original um, equation. So let's write that. x equals 3 fourths is the solution to the equation um, 5, 6, x equals 5 over 8. Oh, you couldn't see that. There you go x equals 3 fourths is the solution to the equation 5 over 6 x equals 5 over 8. And there we go. There's our answer. And now it is time for you guys to check it out. Okay, this is where I want you guys to go ahead and try. Check it out example 2a, check it out example 2b, and check it out example 2c. So let's go ahead and pause. You're going to go ahead and where's our friend? Where is he at? Oh, here they are. Or she. It could be a dragon. You're going to go ahead and pause and work these problems out. And then when you get done, unpause and let's see if you got them right. All right. We'll see you in a bit. Bye. Okay. We are back. Let's go ahead and see how you guys did. I'm trying to get a pen to work here. It's not working. Okay, there we go. All right, so we are trying to figure out what n equals. We're going to isolate it. Uh, One-ninth is here. How is one-ninth related? It's related through addition. We're going to do the inverse operation, which would be subtraction to both sides of the equation. Uh, those cancel. We're left with n equals negative five-ninths minus one-ninth. Well, it's awesome. They have a common denominator. So I'm going to keep that 9, and we have negative 5 minus 1. So when you have two negative numbers um, and you're doing this subtraction, what you do is you just add the numbers together and keep the negative sign. So 5 plus 1 is 6. They're both negative, so it's going to be negative 6 over 9. Um, good. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to see if this answer is in lowest terms. Is there any number that can go into 6 and 9?